normal distribution. Today, we are starting up with the continuous probability distributions. We've already talked about uh, several discrete probability distributions in the earlier recordings. Now we're going to talk about the continuous probability distributions. And within that, the first one is normal distribution. So there are other continuous uh, probability distributions as well. For example, beta distribution, Cauchy distribution, exponential, gamma distribution, logistic distribution. So we will be talking about them. And we are starting up with the normal distribution, first of all. So let's talk about the normal distribution. <clears throat> so it is going to be represented by a bell-shaped curve. Right, something like this. And this is actually showing that uh, this probability distribution that is symmetric around the mean. So what do you mean by it is symmetric around the mean that most of the data values, they are going to be clustered around the mean, the average value. Uh, and so the probability that the observation is going to lie around the mean or near to the mean is more as compared to the probability is going to lie far off. You guys can see it here also. So most of, there are very few observations which are lying uh, very far off from the mean. So let me just write the definition. So normal distribution. So this highest point in the curve, it is representing the most probable event in the series of the data, right? Uh, so, and all other occurrences, whether the value is going to lie here or here, everything, they're all symmetrically distributed around the mean. So in real life, you actually don't see most of the data uh, following normal distribution. So they could be skewed distributions also. But here in case of normal distribution, the other values, they are symmetrical around the mean. So most of the data, this highest point represent the most probable uh, observation or the most probable event in the series of the data, this highest point. Please write this highest point on the curve. On the curve. Represent. most probable event. <clears throat> so this is what your mean, median, mode in the series of data. In the series of data. And all of the occurrences, they are symmetrically distributed around the mean, right? So, and the probability of all other occurrences is going to be lesser. No. So the probability that uh, the observation would be lying here, that is lesser as compared to the observation, which is going to lie around the mean out here. Right. So, and that is the reason you have a downward sloping curve like this, because these probabilities are, uh, are going to fall as you're going to move away from the mean, right? So all other occurrences, they are symmetrically distributed around the mean and, uh, and they are creating a downward sloping curve like this. Uh, there are a few, and, and one more thing. So this is basically your mean equals to median equals to mode. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the standard deviation is going to quantify that what is the variability in this data, that um, what is the dispersion in this data, that how far the values can be around the mean. That's an idea. So there are a few common properties of uh, the normal distribution. So one of the property of the normal distribution is that one 
they are all symmetric bell curves. So half of the data is going to lie to the right of the mean, half of the data is going to lie to the left of the mean, right? Mean, median, mode, they are all equal. <clears throat> so let me just write this for you. The other property is the empirical rule. What do you mean by this? It says this that, uh, um, so I'm going to draw one standard normal distribution. So I haven't told you about the standard normal distribution yet, but just imagine this that, let's say this is uh, the case. And here you have your mean, median, mode, they're all equal. A standard normal variate is one which has a mean zero and uh, which, which has the mean zero, right? So what do you have is, uh, what do you have out here is this, is, this has the mean zero. And for a normal distribution, what happens is that around the mean, your one standard deviation plus another standard deviation minus one standard deviation up other standard deviation down. So this would include almost 68% of the data this much, hmm? this much. It's basically 68% of the data. Remember this. Hmm? Then you have two standard deviation down and two standard deviation up. Two standard deviation down and two standard deviation up. This is going to include almost 95% of the data. This much. This is 95% of the data. Hmm. And three standard deviation down and three standard deviation up. This is going to include ninety nine point seven percent of the data, right? So the idea is that uh, in a normal distribution, sixty eight percent of the values are going to fall within plus or minus one standard deviation around the mean, right? So let me just write that for you. That is in a normal distribution. Sixty eight percent of the observations fall within. <clears throat> plus minus one standard deviation from the mean. Right. So I'm not writing for all of them. I've already told them that is 95% of the observation will fall plus minus two standard deviation from the mean. 99.7% of the uh, observations are going to fall plus minus three standard deviation from the mean. Hmm. Achha, now, normal distribution can have different shapes also, right? Depending upon the parameter values. So there are two parameter values. One is mean, other is your standard deviation. Uh, so let me just write that for you. The normal distribution has many different shapes. Depending upon
depending upon the two parameter depending upon the parameter values and there are two parameters one is mean other is standard deviation guys please make notes alongside me two parameters <clears throat> mean and standard deviation so let's talk about mean first so mean is telling you the peak of the bell curve right and it is telling you um, that most of the values they are clustered around the mean uh, so let me just talk about that particular case when you have the same mean but you have different standard deviations right or we can also talk about you have a uh, same standard deviation but different means so let's just talk about that so what is mean telling you it defines the location of the peak for the bell curve so most values they are clustered around the mean so you can have the case like this you have x values here you have density here and i am drawing the case where you have same standard deviation but different means same standard deviations but different means so we are doing this case first so let's say i have one mean out here and another mean out here right so one of the distribution is let's say this and the another distribution is let's say this right so these are two different distributions right they have the same standard deviation as you guys can see so their variability around the mean is same so this is the mean of this distribution and uh, this guy is the mean of this distribution so if you look at it how far the spread is around the mean this is same almost for both of them that is same almost for both of them so they have the same standard deviation but they have different means so the point which i want to make is that you can have the uh, you can you can have uh, normal distribution which is uh, which can have different shapes also depending on the different parameter values then about the standard deviation mm -hmm. so standard deviation is basically the measure of variability it is defining what is the width of the normal distribution so it is determining how far away the observations are uh, from the mean mm -hmm. it determines how far away from the mean
the values tend to fall. So it is telling you the distance between the observations and the mean. So you can have a case like this. So now I'm drawing the case where you have the mean, which is same, but the standard deviation is different. So you have the values X here. And you have density out here. So I'm just picking up that case where the mean is same, right? Like this, yeah. it's not looking good, just wait. Uh, so this is one distribution. And this is the another distribution, right? So you have the case where the mean is same, but the standard deviation is different. This also should be looking like this. So the case is this. Case two. So you have same mean, but different standard deviations. So you have same mean, but you have different standard deviations. So this is one case. So in this green bell-shaped curve, most of the probability that most of the values they're going to fall uh, near mean that is very high. And in case of the pink normal distribution, the probability that most of the values are going to, I mean, they can be the values which are far off from the mean as well. Uh, so the, this is what this is, what is this representing that you can have the normal distribution, uh, uh, which is going to be dependent upon the different parameter values. So what is this telling you? This is telling you that normal distribution can have different shapes depending upon the different parameter values, depending upon the different parameter values. So we have understood what is in very simple terms, a normal distribution, right? It is one of the continuous distribution. We have seen what are the common properties of the normal distribution and uh, what is the empirical rule which needs to be followed for this. And the normal distribution can have different shapes depending upon the different parameter values. Tomorrow, we're going to take the discussion further about the normal distribution in which we'll talk about the how normal distribution is related to skewness and kurtosis and what is the standard normal variate, right? So we'll look upon, uh, look uh, at that thing tomorrow, right? Thank you, Vita.